roaming around to explore the world, filled with anticipation and curiosity to the Goom River I head. The journey to Gumgong is one of mystique and bliss, drawn from the magnificence of Korea's ancient kingdom, Baekje. I'm a fan of Korean history. One of the major eras was the Three Kingdoms period, and Baekje was the kingdom to the west. Much of this ancient kingdom still exists, and I'm looking forward to checking it out. Let's go! After the Han and Nakdong rivers, the Gum is South Korea's third largest river. Korea's largest granaries, the Nonsan and Honam Plains, run alongside. Given this, the area is hailed as an optimal place to live. For its extensive meandering, resembling fine silk, the river gets its name the Silk River, or Gumgang in Korean. For the people of Chungcheong Province, the Gum has been a key lifeline. These days, the Gum is charting a new course. Restoration projects are underway to revamp its surroundings so that the river, people, and nature can coexist in harmony. 친환경 첨단보입니다. 이제 저기에다가 380만 톤의 물을 가두어서 하루에 하천 유지 용수라든가 농업 용수로 활용할 수도 있고 또 우리가 저충수에서 물이 이렇게 수질이 오염되는 그런 우려가 있었었는데 저 첨단보를 옆으로 눕힘으로 인해 가지고 저충수가 하루로 빠르게 빠져나가는 그러한 효과를 가진 보입니다. First stop, Gongju City. The best of Baekje's culture can be found here. This was the heart of the Baekje Kingdom. Centuries on, much has changed, yet Gongju's dignity remains evident. The courage that once protected Gongju for 64 years can still be felt. Gongju played a crucial role in Baekje's history. After losing its control along the Han River Valley, it was here that Baekje re-established and reasserted its power. Back then, Gongju was known as Ungjin. During the Ungjin era, the Baekje kingdom rebuilt a weakened nation. Through brisk cultural exchanges with the outside world, such as China and Japan, the kingdom worked hard toward its revival. Subsequently, the glory days returned to Baekje. Thanks to its abundant supply of cultural assets, Baekje left a brilliant legacy outshining the other ancient kingdoms of Korea. The Gongju National Museum offers a glimpse into Baekje's glorious past. The museum is a must-see for all. Prosperity and resources brings prosperity and culture, and Baekje culture flourished from its rich, abundant resources. I can see the remains of this culture here in Gongju. Now, up until now, I had only seen these artifacts in pictures. Now, I get to see them for real. It feels as if I had traveled back into Baekje's golden age. The treasures and artifacts were simply breathtaking. Baekje's culture can be described as exquisite, delicate, and elegant. In particular, the golden ornament shaped like a flame symbolizes Baekje's culture. It's a decoration for the king's diadem. From it, one can tell the excellence and sophistication of craftsmanship of that bygone era. Many contemporary artists have tried to emulate various relics of Baekje, but their efforts have largely been in vain. Baekje's cultural influences also have spread to neighboring Japan and China. Perhaps that marked the beginning of what's now known as the Korean Cultural Wave, or Hallyu. Representative of Baekje life, embedded in these relics are the souls of Baekje people. Earrings and bracelets made of gold and silver. Each is unique and creative. What's more, they're elegant. 
백제를 무력화시키는 백제가 국제적으로 굉장히 혼란했던 시기입니다. 고구려의 압박 속에서 다시 힘을 회복해야 되기 때문에 백제는 중국이나 일본 또 신라 손을 잡고 그 세력을 키워하려고 노력을 했습니다. 그러한 결과가 가장 잘 보이는 것이 이 무령왕릉과 그 출토된 유물들입니다. 당시 백제가 국제 교류를 통해서 나라의 힘을 키우기 위해서 노력했던 그 결과들이 가장 바, 잘 반영되어 있는 그 유물들이라고 할수 있습니다. What's amazing is that all these priceless treasures were found at one site, at the royal tomb of King m u y o n g This is intriguing. While the Roman Empire was breathing its last breaths, Bekche civilization was quite advanced with sophisticated, inarticulate craftsmanship. King Mo y o n g played a pivotal role in bolstering the Bekche kingdom and its status. Having seen the relics, one can help but wonder about King Mu Yong himself. At Song Sangni burial mound, seven of Baekje's kings rest, including King Mu Yong. Here, the i m a g is the Baekje 25th Mu Yong King. Baekje was a king of 31 kings, but t h e e 25번째 왕이 무령 왕입니다. 아, 김모영. 아, well, could you tell me the story of King Moyong? 아, 사료에 보면 무령 왕은 이목구비가 수려하고 어, 또 간호하고 인자해서 백성의 마음을 잘 살피고 그래서 정치를 잘한 임금 중에 한 분이다라는 기록이 있습니다. Discovered along with King m u y o n g s tomb, this tomb number six has great historical significance. Wow, so we're actually in the tomb itself. Now I see these paintings on the wall. What do these paintings mean? 사신도. 백제에는 이렇게 사신도가 있는 구분이 두 개밖에 없어요. 여기 와 있는 유코분, 송산이 유코분의 벽화가 있고 또 백제라는 나라가 사비로 천도했을 때는 능살리 고분에 또 썼어요. 근데 능살리 고분에 동화총이라는 곳에 또 이렇게 벽화가 그려져 있는 고분이 있어요. 고구려 같은 경우는 이렇게 벽화가 그려져 있는 고분이 아주 많아요. 그래서 고구려 고분의 특징은 벽화 무덤이다 해도 맞지만 백제 같은 경우에는 아주 두 개밖에 없기 때문에 이 송살리 고분군의 유코분이 갖고 있는 의미가 크다고 볼 수가 있습니다. In between the tomb and that of King Muyong's is an exhibit of the royal tomb preserved in the way that it was discovered. Here we're able to imagine how King Muyong and his queen may have lived. So this looks like how they might have found it when they were excavating it. 음, 여기는 이제 무령 왕릉의 내부에 발견했을 때 모습을 그대로 세워내 놓은 거거든요. 저쪽 입구에 저쪽에. 아, yeah. What is that little animal there? 네, 네. 이상하게 생긴 짐승 보이시죠? 네, 저게 진묘수예요. 진묘수 무덤을 지키는 동물. 저쪽 안으로 보이는 게 이제 왕의 관이 있었던 곳이고요. 이쪽 바깥쪽으로 왕비 관이 있었던 곳이에요. More than 3,000 relics were excavated. Until King Muyong's tomb was discovered, the cultural heritage of the ancient Baekje kingdom could not be traced. And so the discovery of the royal tomb was a major cultural feat for the nation. This is the Baekje 25th Muryong Wangnung. For 1500 years, the land was in the land. In 1971, the king was born in Muryong Wangnung. The lotus leaf pattern on the walls is a sign of China's influence. Through the excavation of King Muryong's tomb, the life of the bygone Baekje era as well as that of Northeast Asia resurfaced. Just like his magnificent royal tomb, King Muyong's visions must have been grand. Seeing King Muyong's tomb was like going back in a time machine. Baekje culture in this period was strong, and I'll admit, it was a little exotic and mysterious too. For greater insights into the ancient Baekje period, I set out again.
and reach Buyo, the last capital of Baekje. Here in Buyo County, the Gum River bears the name Baekmagang. This waterway once served as the cultural center. Once a bustling river, this place also carries with it a sad legacy of Baekje's collapse. An aura of melancholy lingers here at the entrance of Buya Busosan. Here, enemies had brutally attacked and defeated the old kingdom. The enemy's ambush had the last king of Baekje fleeing to Gongju City. Some 3,000 people were left behind. Devoted to their kingdom rather than suffer at the hands of their enemies, the people chose to sacrifice their lives. Wow, this is beautiful. So, could you tell me the story of this place? Once a year, rituals are held along the Bekma River in their honor, amid hopes that their souls rest in peace. This is the big mountain of Chungcheong Province, Chilgap Mountain. Revered as sacred during the Baekje era, ancestral rites were held here. Across the mountain, the Gum River flows. The view is superb. The name Chilgap means Seven Limbs Mountain. The limbs here refer to flower-like ridges branching out from its peak. Its trails are not easy, but the mountain offers the best of Mother Nature, even from a shaky bridge. The sight of the Gung River is splendid. The feeling is one of security, as if in a mother's embrace. Chongyang of South Chungcheong Province is kind of like Venice. Via ten ports, Baekje's people travel these waters on a daily basis. Against the sublime backdrop of Chilgap Mountain, Chongyang's waterway was famous. Only one boat can be seen now, but the wonders of the waterway prevail. In Korean, there is a saying, a loaf of bread is better than the song of many birds. This means that nothing can be appreciated on an empty stomach, not even beautiful scenery. So a taste of Chongyang is next on my to-do list. All right, check this out. This is Gugija Galbi Jungkol. What it's basically is lots of premium ingredients in Korea thrown into one hot pot. For one thing, there is the Gugija, which are these tiny little berries. They're kind of like cranberries and they're really uh, medicinal, but they also taste really good. Then we have ginseng, and we have dechu, which is a Korean date, three kinds of mushrooms, and on top of that we have hanu beef, the best beef you can get almost in the world, all together in one dish. So I am going to check this out. Oh, oh this is deep flavor. All right, check this out, a little hanu gabi. Look at that, great marbling. Oh, it's so tender too. Mmm. Oh. You don't even need teeth to eat this. It's rich, rich, rich. It is packed with flavor. Um, the marbling in here 
makes it so that it just stays tender. You don't really need to cook it that much. So this hasn't been cooking that long and it's really very tender. This is a wonderful combination of the fruit of a Chinese vine and ribs. The fruit is also known as Chinese Emperor Qin Shi Huang's elixir plant. As a dish representing the Grand Gum River, it is quite fitting. I've lived in Korea for many years, but still taste surprised me. This is the first time I've ever had this. And it proves the fact that you can have a lot of flavor and still have healthy food at the same time. So Korea, kind, Korean food kind of twists what we always assume that if it's healthy, it must taste bad. But no, this is healthy and it tastes good. Mm. The dish is second to none. I have no complaints. Indigenous to Sochan is this Ramie fabric moshi. It's especially popular during the hot summer months. The fabric is cultivated from the Hansan region and so its name is Hansan moshi. Master artisans are still at work in Hansan to continue this tradition of moshi making. For 60 years, this lady has been producing around the clock. Without a doubt, she is a master craftswoman. To the amateur's eyes, the fine threads can seem invisible. Yet this lady is able to weave them together. She's an expert weaver, and her skills are amazing. Patience is a virtue here. For the master weaver, however, this daunting task is completed in a day. She is a model of the diligence that Koreans are globally renowned for. Encountering a rare sight, I snap away pictures hoping to capture each moment. Ever since the discovery of Moshi back in the Baekje days, Hansan Moshi has been famous nationwide. For a thousand years among royals and commoners alike, it has been popular, and its popularity remains well alive. Every summer, Sochan hosts its Moshi festival to celebrate the beauty of Hansan Moshi. The traditional technology of Hansan Moshi weaving is now a national cultural asset. Hansan Moshi is an ancestral and a cultural legacy in a league of its own. Facing an ocean, Gunsan. It's also where the Gum River ends. Into a modern city, it has transformed. Yet here too, history runs deep. During the Baekje period, Gunsan served as a key strategic base for the military. It ruled as a marine kingdom, and it, at times, it succumbed to enemy forces. As a key route to the Gum River, the waterway also meant access to Korea for the neighboring countries, and so its rich historical heritage. To this day, the Gum River flows, opening a series of new chapters in history. Among other offerings, Gunsan is famous for this landmark. Here we meet Gunsan's proud son and master novelist, Che Man Shik. During Japan's colonization of Korea, Che wrote a series of satirical novels and thereby gained global attention. His main works include The Muddy Water, Peace Under Heaven, and A Ready-Made Life. Through his writings, we're able to gain insights into the past. 일제 시대 때 군산이라는 데는 상당히 번성을 했던 도시입니다. 그럼에도 불구하고 우리나라 사람들은 우리 조선인들은 상당히 힘들게 살았던 데가 고시대였습니다. 그래서 탕류 속에 나와 있는 우리나라 사람들은 정말 힘이 들고 먹을 걸 제대로 못 먹고 궁핍하게 살았던 때이기도 합니다. 그래서 탁한 흐름이다라는 탕류라는 것 자체가 그 일제 시대 때 우리 군산뿐만이 아니라 우리나라 전체적으로 상당히 힘들고 혼탁했고 암울했던 시대를 탕류라고 표현했을 것 같습니다. The Gumgang port in Gunsan is highly acclaimed for its natural environment. For migratory birds, this is a haven. 
Every year, some 500,000 migratory birds, even preserved species, flock to this area. The spectacle of birds that pack this area during winter is as beautiful and refreshing as one could hope for. A journey back to Baekje. This trip was somewhat spontaneous and well worth the effort. Still to do, however, is meeting the locals, the souls of Baekje. Traveling alone can give you a lot of freedom, but it can wear thin after a while, and you want to spend some time with the locals. Well, I hear the people in Chungcheong province are known for their hospitality, and I'm going to meet some now. My next stop is near a Buddhist temple called Maguksa. Mesmerized by the sight of this traditional Korean-style house, I decided to spend the night here. Hello. Wow. May I say you have a gorgeous house, and it's just breathtaking up against that mountain. Uh, may I ask, may I uh, stay here for the night? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. <laughs> well, actually, I've been traveling the Gum River trying to study and learn more about Baekje culture, and I saw your house. And I just had to come and see if you had a homestay here. Actually, I've never done a homestay before, so this will be quite interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Just like the Gum River, the people of Chungcheong seem relaxed and easygoing. The locals welcome and take in even a foreigner like myself. They not only offer me a bed, but also food. It's been said, no pain, no gain. And after a long journey, I am treated to my favorite Korean pork barbecue, Samgyeopsal. Meat wrapped in a leaf is a common practice here in Korea, which I had no problems picking up. In fact, I'm just as good, if not better, than the locals at this. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. I have been going up and down uh, the Gum River, Gumgang. Up and down. Uh, the dinner is delightful. Perhaps it's the company I had, my new local friends in Chungcheong. <laughs> Knowing that my trip is drawing to a close, I decided to reflect on my recent experience with the pictures that I had taken. With the children, I share not only the pictures, but stories from my journey. I have traveled around Korea somewhat, but this is my maiden trip to the Gum River. For this reason, it will always be ingrained in my memory. Precious moments filled with wonder and awe. It was an experience like no other. Learning about the region's history, at times heartbreaking, made it all the more real. Along the Gum River, surrounded by the splendid field of reeds, I spend my final minutes of the journey. I wonder if this is what the beginning of the world felt like. A home to the locals, this land gave them affluence and prosperity, not to mention a priceless culture. The miracle of the Gum River. Now the river is opening a new frontier to create a heaven on earth for its people and nature. The Gum River, a river of abundance and prosperity, carrying the Baekje spirit. I feel a little closer to Korea having followed this historic path. What does the future have in store for this mighty waterway? Well, I may just have to return to find out.